The heat required to change the liquid to a solid, so now we're freezing water. That's called the latent heat of fusion. And again, in the same way, don't be confused. The heat required to change an ice cube into liquid water is also called the latent heat of fusion. Now here's a figure from the book, figure 711. And again, like with all these figures, if you slowly take your time to read them and understand them, you'll get a lot more out of them than just saying, oh yeah, I see the figure and turn the page. So here we have the freezing point of water. And before we can actually even begin to raise the temperature of that water, we need to add a certain amount of heat. Here we are changing the solid state of water to the liquid state. Temperature remains zero degrees. So as that ice is melting, we're adding energy, but we're not seeing a temperature change because we have to satisfy the latent heat of fusion. And it turns out that that latent heat of fusion is 80 calories per gram of water or 33 joules per gram. Think about this for a moment. To go from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, to go from the freezing point of water to the boiling point of water takes 100 calories for one gram of water. Here we're looking at 80 calories just to change the state, to change this solid to a liquid. It's an amazing amount of energy, but the story gets even more amazing. As we go from zero degrees to 100 degrees centigrade, for one gram of water, it takes one calorie per gram. So it takes 100 calories, 100 calories, to raise the temperature of liquid water at zero degrees to liquid water at 100 degrees. And you can actually have liquid water at zero degrees because until you remove that 80 calories, it's not ice, and you can actually have liquid water at 100 degrees centigrade because until you add that latent heat of vaporization it's still liquid you haven't added the energy that changes the physical state of the matter okay still with me to change the physical state of liquid water at 100 degrees celsius to steam requires an astounding 540 calories per gram of water that's more than five times the amount of energy needed to raise temperature from freezing to boiling just to turn it into steam. Why is that so amazing? What that means then is a gram of cloud, if you want to think about clouds as water vapor in that way, a gram of cloud contains 540 calories of heat. So that water vapor has a lot of heat in it. And when those clouds move around, and then when that cloud cools down or is put under higher pressure uh, or, or lower pressure and it changes state as it changes back to uh, water vapor, changes back to a liquid, it releases that heat. So it's kind of anti-intuitive, but when it rains, the clouds are actually releasing heat. They're releasing that latent heat of vaporization. So they may be taking heat that was uh, grabbed in the tropics those clouds come up to the temperate zone or, or travel around, and then when those clouds condense, they release their heat. That's a latent heat of vaporization, and it's really amazing how much heat is transferred just by clouds and water vapor. And again, that's the latent heat of vaporization. Okay, let's take a little closer look at this, and you can read this slide on your own, but again, we're taking it a gram of ice that measures zero degrees. If we melt it to a gram of water, it takes 80 calories. That's the latent heat of fusion. A gram of zero degree water to 100 degree C water requires 100 calories. That's just the sensible heat that we can measure on a thermometer. And then to change 100 degree liquid water to 100 degree water vapor, takes 540 calories or the latent heat of vaporization. So study these slides and, stu and read this carefully and make sure you understand that. Because here we have a, a really good example of how the physical properties of the water molecule, simply its latent heat, manifest themselves on a global scale. It's this latent heat of the water molecule 
that really is responsible for heat being transferred from the tropics to higher latitudes. It would be freezing cold in California if we didn't have this kind of process. So it's the molecular properties of water that are being translated on a global scale that are responsible for heat exchange on our planet. I think that's pretty cool.